Welcome to a world where the line between reality and myth blurs, where shadows hold secrets and the past whispers its haunting tales. Today we embark on a journey to explore some of the most enigmatic and eerie islands on Earth, places where history has left its indelible mark in the most unsettling ways. These are real destinations you can visit yourself. Hard to get to, very remote, but doable. I was fortunate enough to visit two of them myself, but I can't say I made it back unscathed. There were a few bumps along the way. So a word of caution. These are not for the faint-hearted, nor are they places to wander alone. But this isn't about me. It's about real islands with an ominous history that you can visit yourself. Join me as we delve into the dark mystique of these islands with a dangerous past, unraveling their chilling legends and uncovering the truths that lurk beneath their picturesque facades. Are you ready to face the unknown? Let's begin. An island filled with hundreds of hanging, decomposing, decapitated dolls strung up in trees. Over 50 years ago, Don Julian Santana left his wife and child and moved onto an island on Teshuilo Lake in the Xochimilco canals. His reasons for doing so are hazy at best. According to some, a young girl drowned in the lake, while most others, including his relatives, say Don Julian Santana merely imagined the drowned girl. Regardless, soon after Don Julian learned of the girl's drowning, he discovered a doll floating down the canals, thus changing the course of his life and the shape of the island for years to come. Santana devoted his life to honoring this lost soul in a unique, fascinating, and for some unnerving way. He collected and hung up dolls by the hundreds. Eventually, Don Julian transformed the entire island into a kind of bizarre for some horrifying doll-infested wonderland. Don Julian Santana began collecting lost dolls from the canals and the trash near his island home. He is also said to have traded produce he grew to locals for more dolls. Santana did not clean up the dolls or attempt to fix them, but rather put them up with missing eyes and limbs covered in dirt and generally in whatever ramshackle state he found them in. Even when dolls arrived in good shape, the wind and weather turned them into cracked and distorted versions of themselves. Don Julian also kept his cabin filled with dolls, which he dressed in headdresses, sunglasses, and other accoutrement. Although most people found the aisle frightening, Don Julian saw the dolls as beautiful protectors, and he welcomed visitors whom he would show around charging a small fee for taking photos. In 2001, Don Julian Santana was found drowned in the same area in which he believed the little girl had died. So here's what to know before you go to this island. It's located in the Xochimilco borough, 17 miles south of the center of Mexico City. Best way to get there is to leave from Embarcadero Quimanco. It's four hours round trip and costs roughly 75 US dollars. I wouldn't go alone. For our next island visit, we journey 10,000 miles west to just off the coast of Bali, Indonesia. Shrouded in mist and legend lies Nusa Penida, a land of dramatic cliffs, turquoise waters, and ancient stories. But beneath this perfect paradise lies a dark history that dates back to the 10th century. Tales of powerful demons, vengeful warlocks, and epic battles between good and evil. This is the story of Makaling, a master of black magic. Even to this very day, the local Balinese people dare not utter his name out loud. Exiled to Nusa Penida, he swore revenge on those who banished him. His wrath would plunge Bali into darkness. The legend of Makaling is more than just a tale. It's woven into the fabric of Nusa Penida. It's a story of darkness and light, revenge and redemption and it continues to shape the island and its people to this very day. Maxiling was no ordinary man. He possessed forbidden knowledge and a mastery of dark magic. His power was immense, his ambition even greater. He craved control, dominance over the spiritual and physical realms. 
His ambition led him down a dangerous path. He delved into the darkest corners of magic, seeking ultimate power. This drew the attention of powerful priests, guardians of balance. They saw the threat Mackling posed. Balinese priests, fearful of his growing power, confronted Makaling. A fierce battle ensued, a clash of light and darkness. Though strong, they could not defeat him. Instead, they chose to banish him. Makaling was exiled to Nusa Panita, a remote island. Isolated, stripped of his power, he seethed with rage. He swore revenge, vowing to unleash his fury upon Bali. Years passed, but Macaling's rage did not subside. He plotted his revenge, waiting for the opportune moment. That moment arrived during Niepi, the Balinese Day of Silence. Niepi is a sacred time, a day of reflection, fasting, and meditation. All activity ceases. The island falls silent, blanketed in darkness. It was the perfect opportunity for Macaling to strike. He unleashed a wave of demons upon Bali, the island shrouded in darkness and silence, was vulnerable. The demons wreaked havoc, spreading fear and chaos. Bali's protective spirits were powerless. Makaling's revenge was swift and brutal. He reveled in the chaos. His laughter echoed across the sea. The once tranquil island of Bali now trembled before him. The Balinese people were helpless against Macaling's magic. Desperate, they turned to the priests for help. The priests, known for their wisdom and connection to the divine, were their last hope. The priests decided to create a new Barong, a mythical, lion-like creature. This creature would embody the strength and courage needed to face Macaling. It would be their champion, their only hope against Macaling. Balinese priests channeled all their spiritual energy into the creation of the Barong. They carved its mask from sacred wood, imbuing it with immense power. The barong was more than just a mask. It was a vessel for divine energy. When the barong was complete, it roared to life. The transformation from a mere mask to a living protector was nothing short of miraculous. A surge of power erupted, banishing the darkness. The energy from the barong was so powerful that it dispelled the evil forces surrounding them. The Barong, a symbol of hope, charged towards Nusa Panita, ready to confront Makaling. The final battle was about to begin. Puriped, a cliffside temple on Nusa Panita, is shrouded in legend. This ancient temple, perched high above the crashing waves, has been a beacon of spiritual energy for centuries. It is said to be the site where the Barong and priests finally confronted Makaling. The confrontation is a pivotal moment in the island's history, symbolizing the triumph of good over evil. Puripet is a place of pilgrimage for the Balinese. Every year, thousands of devotees make the journey to this sacred site drawn by its powerful spiritual aura. Legend has it that the temple is built upon a powerful energy vortex. This vortex is believed to be a source of immense spiritual power, drawing people from all over the world. The energy here is palpable, and many visitors report feeling a profound sense of peace and clarity. The temple's precarious location atop a cliff adds to its mystique. The dramatic setting with its sweeping views of the ocean enhances the sense of awe and reverence. It stands as a reminder of the constant battle between the forces of nature and the enduring strength of faith. So later on, in the 1800s, the island became a haven for hardened criminals. Bali sent their undesirables there as punishment. The Dutch colonists called it Bandit Island. Today, Nusa Panita is a haven for tranquility seekers and adventure enthusiasts. The island boasts breathtaking landscapes, pristine beaches, and an abundance of marine life. Tourists flock to Nusa Panita, drawn by its natural beauty. They explore its hidden coves, marvel at its dramatic cliffs, and swim with giant manta rays. But beneath this serene facade, the island's dark history lingers. Locals speak of Makaling in hushed tones, his legend a constant reminder of the island's duality. Nusa Panita is a place of contrasts, a place where tranquility and terror coexist, 
where ancient legends intertwine with modern day life. Next up in our eerie journey, we head east to the vast expanse of the Pacific Ocean nestled between Hawaii and American Samoa lies Palmyra Atoll. It's adorned with lush tropical rainforest and encircled by vibrant coral reefs teeming with marine life. Covering just 11.9 square kilometers, this remote paradise paints a picture of tranquility with its turquoise lagoons and pristine white sand beaches. Yet beneath its serene facade lies a dark enigmatic reputation that rivals that of the infamous Bermuda Triangle. Palmyra Atoll is shrouded in mystery, earning the moniker of a cursed island. Tales of inexplicable disappearances and grisly deaths have haunted its history, casting a long shadow over its pristine shores. In 1855, a U.S. whaling ship found itself marooned on the island's treacherous reefs. When rescue teams finally reached the atoll, they were met with an eerie silence. The ship's crew had vanished without a trace. The ship itself, partially submerged and eerily abandoned, offered no clues to their fate, leaving behind only a haunting mystery, adding another chilling layer to Palmyra's dark lore. The island's sinister influence extends to the skies as well. Over the years, planes have inexplicably vanished from radar or plummeted from the heavens while flying over Palmyra Atoll. The remains of these aircrafts and their passengers are seldom found fueling speculation about supernatural forces at play. Despite its fearsome reputation, Palmyra Atoll did not deter the intrepid Roger Lextrate. The owner of the island asked Roger to manage the island. Lextrate made the island his home, carving out a life of solitude amid its haunting beauty. He built a wooden house, a sanctuary from the island's mysteries, and established a daily ritual of sipping cocktails at 5 p.m. while his faithful dog roamed the islets hunting the ubiquitous rats. Lextrate's presence on Palmyra adds a human element to the island's eerie tale, a lone figure living in harmony with a place reputed to be cursed. His tranquil existence set against the backdrop of the island's dark history serves as a testament to the allure and danger that coexist on Palmyra Atoll. The story goes, he saw it as a challenge and wanted to escape all people. One year turned into eight long years. From time to time, the island would get other random visitors, but for the most part, he was truly alone in the world. Sometimes when he was alone for long periods, he'd get a little bit wild. He would not put shoes on. He acted like an animal with his dog. He wouldn't wear clothes. Sometimes he went four or five months like this. Sometimes he got so very wild, the dog challenged his authority. He wanted to get away from civilization, from people, and be very close to nature, and he did it. The isolation seemed to take its toll on Lextrate's sense of reality. Palmyra Atoll remains an enigmatic jewel in the Pacific, a place where natural beauty and supernatural mystery intertwine. Its history is a tapestry of unexplained disappearances, violent deaths, and eerie tales that defy logic. Yet, it also offers a glimpse of peaceful isolation as evidenced by Roger Lextrate's years of solitude. Palmyra Atoll stands as a haunting reminder of the unknown, a place where the boundaries between reality and myth blur, leaving an indelible mark on all who dare to venture into its enigmatic embrace. Our last stop takes us to Tiny Speck in the South Pacific Island, Easter Island, the mystery of the Moai. Dutch explorers landed on the tiny island on Easter Sunday in 1722. The Dutch explorer Jacob Roggeveen named the island Passe Land, Easter Island, to commemorate the day they arrived. To their surprise, they stumbled across these bizarre, oversized stonehead sculptures peppered across the landscape. Nothing like they have ever seen before. Just imagine for a moment what it must have felt like to come across these bewildering giant heads averaging 14 feet high. It truly must have seemed like they fell off the edge of the known world and landed in a new bizarre dimension. This island covers roughly 64 square miles in the South 
Pacific Ocean and is located some 2,300 miles from Chile's west coast, known as Rapa Nui to its earliest inhabitants. Easter Island must surely be one of the greatest mysteries of human civilization. Many theories have been formed over the years about where the original inhabitants came from, why they built hundreds of monumental statues called Moai, how they transported them, and why the people who made them eventually died out. Despite much scientific research and investigation over recent years, there's still a lot we don't know. But here's what we do know about one of the most remote and intriguing communities in the world. The first human settlers, known as the Rapa Nui, were from Polynesia, not South America, as was believed for a long time. This has now been proven through DNA testing on human skeletons from the island. There is still much debate about when they arrived, with dates suggesting anywhere between 300 and 1200 AD. The biggest statue found is about 32 feet tall and consists of a single block weighing about 82 tons. These enormous stone busts, known as Moai, were carved out of tuff, the light porous rock formed by consolidated volcanic ash, and placed atop ceremonial stone platforms called ahus. It is still unknown precisely why these statues were constructed in such numbers and on such a scale, or how they were moved around the island. Unfortunately, the fate of the island and its inhabitants is plagued with misfortune. The late period of the island civilization was characterized by civil wars and general destruction. Most of the, the statues were toppled and many obsidian spear points have been found dating to that period. Island tradition claims that around 1680, after peacefully coexisting for many years, one of the island's two main groups, known as the Short Ears, rebelled against the Long Ears. By this time, many of the island's original natural resources, including most of its trees, had been depleted. A major slave raid from Peru in 1862, followed by epidemics of smallpox, reduced the population to only 111 people by 1877. By that time, Catholic missionaries had settled on Easter Island and begun to convert the population to Christianity, a process that was completed by the late 19th century. Almost all of its original culture was decimated and lost forever. UNESCO named Easter Island a World Heritage Site. It is now home to a mixed population, mostly of Polynesian ancestry and made up of the descendants of the Long Ears and Short Ears. Spanish is generally spoken, and the island has developed an economy largely based on tourism. The sculptures have been stood back up in their proper stance, and you can visit this fascinating island for yourself. It's quite the trek and very remote, but it is well worth it. Due to its remoteness, the only way to access the island from the mainland is via aircraft. LATAM is the only carrier that flies the route from Santiago to Easter Island. Ticket prices average around USD 400, one way. Exploring the most dark and mysterious islands in the world offers an unforgettable journey into realms where history, legend, and nature intertwine. Each step taken in these enigmatic places invites you to uncover stories long forgotten, to feel the palpable presence of the past, and to embrace the thrilling unknown. Whether you're drawn to their mystical beauty or their ominous legends, these islands promise an adventure that transcends time and leaves an indelible mark on your soul. Oh yeah, and just a word from the wise, don't trek these islands alone. Bring a friend along. Happy travels.